please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Rule 8, call the meeting to order. Those presents, Beryl Baker, County Clerk, Charles Vance, President, Phoebe Harless, Commissioner, K.K. Matthews, Commissioner, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the regular session of Lincoln County Commission meeting that's held on February 1st, 2018 at 6 o'clock. I'll send that. Well, I'll send that. Okay, on uh, public comment, uh, first one we have is uh, Larry Stutton with Lincoln EDA. Thank you, Mr. President. Commissioners, uh, I'm here tonight to briefly share with you the reaction of the Lincoln Economic Development Authority to recent events at the Rock Creek Development uh, site which is, a lot of us know it as Hobat. If you recall at one time, former Governor Tomlin had a grand plan for development uh, in that area, and that has been changed considerably. As we stand here now, it's probably reduced to, well it is, to basically a uh, National Guard training facility, period. Um, so, in regards to that, um, we wrote a letter from the Lincoln Economic Development Authority, and I just wanted to share this with you all tonight uh, so you'll be aware of, of our position. And I think following me, uh, Rick Ryan is on my board, and he'll be sharing some more details. <clears throat> this letter was addressed to Governor Justice, also to Commerce Secretary Thrasher, to uh, Speaker Armstead, and Senate President Carmichael. And we sent one to each one. The Lincoln Economic Development Authority is in strong disagreement with recent decisions abrogating the Rock Creek Development Project. The action taken in December 2017 to vacate the original plan of a 2.6 mile four lane access highway diminished the anticipated economic impact significantly. Executive Order Number 5 18, February 7, 2018, essentially gutted the project. What was to be the largest mixed-use development project in West Virginia history <clears throat> is now a little more than a military training ground. We support our military, but the focus here should be economic development, and we challenge you to produce substantive case studies proving that this type of facility generates economic activity, even remotely, consistent with original projections. Equally disturbing is the complete absence of communication and collaboration by current administration officials with Lincoln County. A large portion of the site lies within the legal borders of Lincoln, yet every action was learned second and third hand. We deserve better. What had been communicated, what has been communicated clearly and repeatedly, is our need for sites to diversify our economy and to think big. Contrast that with stripping the biggest site in the history of West Virginia of already designated resources and turning it over to an entity of singular purpose dependent on a politically controlled budget. It is common knowledge that problems plaguing the coal industry in recent years have left county, municipal, and family budgets strained to the point of breaking. The Rock Creek Development Project was an opportunity to revitalize, diversify, and grow the economy in our county, region, and state. We are appalled at the deliberate and insensitive manner with which this entire project has been scrapped. We are devastated that the destruction of hopes, dreams, jobs, families, and futures of so many is the consequence. That's the letter and I have a copy for you. Uh, like I said, Rick will be speaking more to this in just a little bit. Also, I want to give you, since I'm here, we, uh, if you recall, we did a comprehensive plan last year, and I don't think I've ever gave you all a copy, so I brought one for each of you commissioners, if you will. There's a copy of the lady, Mr. President, and our comprehensive plan for each of you. And within that, there's items in here we're already working on. So, there you go. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, man. Rick Ryan. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Commissioners. I want to talk to you also about the Rock Creek development. <clears throat> this goes back to Governor Tomlin that set all this in motion and thought he had it pretty well sewed up to where it would work. I also, we got, well, both of us sat on the Quarter G Development Authority also, and uh, we was coming up with a video put together to shop this out to potential people that was interested in coming onto this property. Well, Thrasher Engineering was sending an engineer to our Quarter G meeting, sitting in a meeting with us. So I set it up with uh, the people at ERP, which was the old Hobet job, <clears throat> and, uh, so we could get on the property and Thrasher sent uh, some of his engineers with a drone, and the college had a drone, and we went up and filmed, videoed where the road was going to come in and videoed the property that would be available for uh, development. And we made the video, right in front of it, had Thrasher engineering and all this stuff. Well, next thing we know, the engineer quit coming to our meetings. And shortly after that, we started getting little bit, tidbits of it was going to be scrapped. When the meantime, this mat surfaced. This was hand delivered to IMSHA, uh, showing all the property that had been given away to the National Guard. Everything in green, see, let me get it adjusted right. Everything in green was given away. That's the whole job. The only thing that was left, this is where the belt line went around the mountain. This is the prep plant area. All this property, Lincoln County, this little bit of blue is where they're working at now, and when they're finished with it, it'll also go turn green. So this property was given away. They didn't come to Lincoln County and ask y'all how y'all felt about it. They didn't go to Boone County or Logan and ask nobody about this, because Thrasher was even in on helping us make videos to shop this property to people. Then this was hand delivered to IMSHA. The, the head guy, Terry Price, over IMSHA, wanted to know why this was a carrier for General Hoyer. Brought this map to give to him. He said, why did you deliver this map instead of ERP? He said, because the general told me to deliver it. I mean, that's only... And the reason he's giving this to IMSHA to show IMSHA they had no control over this property now because it had been given to the government, or give to the National Guard. And they was trying to tell Amsha, well, you can't go out here and inspect nothing. But there's a few hiccups in that part of it, too, because of the drag line situation. But all this property was given away. The rug pulled right out from under, so they had a bond that had already been sold. They had the money. A bid had been worked up. The job had already been bid out and given to the company that was going to do this work. All that was, that company had spent probably hard to tell fifty to hundred thousand dollars working up a bid. Well, this got jerked out from under them, but nobody seems to know nothing about it. We had a meeting with in the governor's office in uh, Southern West Virginia day, and I asked him about the map. He acted like he didn't have no idea about the map. You know, I don't know whether he was putting on a good show or whether he actually didn't know. But I think what I'm asking, if y'all can write a letter also to go along with the Quarter G Development Authority and the EBAs, uh, Boone County Commission is supposed to also send a letter. Uh, Quarter G, and like I said, the EDAs is supposed to, and we're trying to get a, a meeting where we can sit down with the governor and Thrasher and look us in the face and tell us why they done this. Now, they let that bond go back, and that's, we talked to bond lawyers that's been in going for 28 and 30 years, said they've never seen it, they learned, or heard of it, or seen it before, that they would turn a bond back in that way. It's like $54 million that they just give back. But they're still talking about going to what we call the chicken barn, right below Hobet, building a bridge across, going up the mountain and coming through uh, into Hobet. So we don't know whether that money's coming from the bond money that was voted in here recently for roads or what. You know, and I, I'm just to be frank with you, I'm pissed off over this. I'm pissed off. We got the lowest amount of money to fix our roads in Lincoln County. This was one chance we had at maybe getting some development in Lincoln County. 
Armstrong down here had done worked up a plan. They was going to run high-speed internet to the back side of Hobat so it would be ready for people to come in there. All this stuff's been scrapped. And uh, I'd just like to have a meeting with them so I can look them in the face and tell them that we're pissed off. And excuse my language, but that's just the way I feel about it. I'm tired of getting brushed off to the side on this stuff. And I don't know if you can do it tonight or whatever, but if i got to come back to the next meeting to get a letter wrote and sent in with the letters we're already doing, but uh, it would be appreciated. Yeah, Thank I, I just think, uh, I mean, I think we all support your view on this, okay? I just think uh, we'll just put it on the agenda for our next time so we can do this, okay? Okay. Uh, but I do think it's important, just like you say, that we, we, we get this in, get this into them and get a meeting with the governor. Find out, you know, uh, who, who's benefiting from it if we're not benefiting from it. Well, I'm getting that tired of asking one of them. They act like you don't know, and you go to the next one, they don't know either. I'd like to get them in the same room, you know, so they're either going to tell us why they done it, what's behind it, ERP's tickled to death now because they're both, they will no longer be liable for anything that happens on this property. You know, it takes a liability out of their hands. They're tickled to death. It's saving them, you know, millions of dollars. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Ron, did you want, uh, Mr. Polly, do you want to speak on the same thing? That and community center. Okay, I, I'm going to go ahead and get the next one in line, then I'll get you, okay? Uh, Paul Davis? Well, I just want to take an opportunity here. I hope I have a nice opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Paul Davis. I'm running for Congress, and I just wanted to take a, a minute to um, just introduce who I am and where I come from and maybe get a, a chance to maybe meet some folks here. Um, I'm from Huntington. I've been uh, born and raised there. All my mother's side of the family is from Lincoln County, so if you're a Linville, Porter, Isaac, or um, a Browning, you're probably related to me somehow down the chain somewhere down the line. I've been married 35 years to my wife Sandy. We have uh, uh, two boys, they're grown. Uh, one is the band director at Wayne High School. And so, and the other one's an accountant at one of the banks there in Huntington. Um, I am your working uh, candidate. I, I, I come from a working class family. My great grandfather was a miner. He was killed in the mines in Fayette County. My grandfather on my father's side was a boiler maker and my father was a, a, a machinist at CNO Railroad. So. Uh, the unions over the years have provided a lot for my, me and my family, and I, I'm very appreciative. So I know what it's like, and if it wasn't for uh, that group of folks and uh, at, at the railroad, we wouldn't, we, they put the food on our tables, and I understand how that works. Um, so I just want to take a minute to introduce myself. Uh, there, I, I'm going to hang around for a while if anybody wants to get to know me a little bit better, but uh, I'm like um, Rick here, I am pissed off. I mean, just to be honest with you. We in southern West Virginia get the short end of the stick almost every time it comes down the road. I lived on Route 10 outside of Huntington. How long have we been hearing that there was going to be a road built uh, through Lincoln County into, into Logan? We never happened. All roads ended up in Charleston. And now we're seeing this, this project here being pulled away from us again. We got to get folks back in there that are going to fight for us and they're going to fight for the working class people and and that in and, and, and Charleston and the DC. So I hope you'll take an opportunity to look at what we passed out tonight and uh, and please call me if you would like to uh, learn more about who I am and uh, I appreciate your support when it comes uh, May 8th. Thank you. Mr. Paul. Mr. President, Commissioners. I'll talk okay. a little bit about what Rick was talking about, about the development. <clears throat> Phase two of that development, which they hadn't talked about, was to bring the fort, their highway from the airport ridge there at Hobet on down toward the Mud River Lake. God knows we need some kind of access to that lake. There's all kinds of development down around that lake if we had a good access to it. <clears throat> Not only that, everybody knows coal service taxes dried up. We've got a little bit back, but it's pretty well not enough to help us anymore. That's the only big debate that our county could have had. Is that, that's like there, we need to, anybody here knows we need that money back for investment. We've got sheriff, sheriff departments, low on funds, all the offices in this courthouse is just working on shoestrings. I think uh, we've been done wrong on this 
this uh, project. Right now, they're still going to build a bridge right below the Hobet. $35.6 million is the bid on it. And the road going back to, which is really in the head of uh, Big Horse Creek <coughs> coming up, the Hobet's $30 more million for a road. So we're looking at 65 points and change for a road they're now building. That's going to be for the National Guard, it looks like, because it's going to be a private road. But how can, I don't think we can stand by and let them use taxpayer bond money and build a private road on a private coal company's property and give it to the National Guard when it benefits nobody. Not one drop of <coughs> development money will come out of this. And it don't matter what to say, they're going to tell you the Michelin's coming in there to do a tar study. That's about four guys coming in there to look at tar and see how they work. Lars is going to put a test site in there for the buggies they built the National Guard. That's three or four factory reps coming in there. See how these machines operate under conditions. But as far as helping Boone or Lincoln County, it's not going to do squat for them. So I think we all get behind this and push this issue. Governor is step up to the plate or we need to do something about it. And, and the other thing I want to say was I'd like to thank commissioners for the helping us with the McCorkle Community Center. Uh, I think a report was sent to you from the board here, and you'll notice in the report they've got a couple contributions and got some things in the work. I think they're doing a pretty good job there, and it's really helped them out. I think we've got things set on the right right pace down there. We've got other things we need to check on, but I think that, uh, that really saved them right there. I'd just like to say thank you and appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to a discussion of concern and possible action. Region 2 Drawdown. Hi, I'm Lisa Wells with Region 2. I know you're normally used to seeing Steve Fry. He's still with our agency, but he's moved into a different capacity. So I will now be your contact on the Lower Mud um, Phase 1 water project. Um, Good news, construction is getting ready to start on this project finally, beginning this month. We had our wage rate meetings with the contractors last week, and everything is moving ahead, which is why I'm here for a drawdown. Uh, basically, it's time to pay a little bit of bills. Um, one of the contractors, Janaki Construction, did submit a bill, and it's primarily for materials, for $66,811.50. Now this particular invoice will be split between two of the funding sources for the project. One of it was the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, um, which is taking the bulk of this particular invoice of so forty eight thousand four twenty four ninety two, and that was um, it, the Lincoln County PSD has that particular funding source, and I was at their meeting last week, and they okayed that portion of the payment. So on this particular drawdown is the small cities block grant portion or the community development block grant they're trying to get us to use that term for the grant at this point it's going to be a hard transition for me though the community development block grant balance which is what is part of this particular drawdown tonight is eighteen thousand three eighty six fifty eight and also in addition to that particular invoice we have three invoices from region two in the amount of two thousand six eighty one oh five so the total draw drawdown request for the community development block grant funds that I have before you tonight is $21,067.63. Um, I have the information here, and if you would like to move to pay this, um, I can get you to sign these and we can move on with that. Are there any questions? What's the number of the drawdown request? This is drawdown number seven. I apologize. Uh, region two's presentation. The motion to go ahead and accept the drawdown request is presented. Our mayor. So, All right, I have some documents here. On these water projects, is it typical that the money that comes from um, I know the block right you want, but the Army Corps of Engineer money does that typically go to the PSDs? That's a very good question. I'm not sure how that goes. I think it just basically how the funding stream, how the engineer puts it together, those types of things. I would have to specifically find that. I'm not sure if there's a precedent set that it goes to the PSDs. So I would have to get back with you on that if you don't mind. Um, I don't think that there is, but I don't want to mislead you either. So I would better confirm that um, because I don't think 
I think the, the core money can go to multiple types of agencies, but again, I would like to confirm that. I know we've had issues in the past with that. That's what I was going to say. We're, we're, uh, yeah. We like to watch those type things because of problems we've had before okay. with a million dollar problems. And uh, that's why we, we, I'm not sure that's why we received the question. We need to know the answer to that. Okay, I will. Uh, how about if I, I'm getting you an answer and I can email? I'll, I'll email That'd that great. response to, to Mary tomorrow. Um, and also, I can also break, give you the breakdown of. I can follow up with some more documentation <coughs> for that core side of things. But on the first page, I need the president's signature. And you guys have blue ink. That's wonderful. I see. Will you send me a copy of that? Too? I will email you that as well tomorrow. And I need everybody else's signature on the resolution. Yeah, I'll get a response for you and I'll send it with the copy of the executed documents. She gets your copies of these. Yes, you know. And included in that copy, I'll also put in the core portion of the draw so you can kind of see how it matches up in the course calculations. On breaking out, the, basically the 25% match is what's the small the community development block grant funds are for that particular grant. So get the answer and I'll get that information. Are there any other questions? All right, well, I thank you for your time. Thank you, appreciate it. Next on the agenda, Gary Lamville Sheriff. Yeah, I feel good. Had, uh, we moved a little bit of money around from the process server uh, in my budget side for to, and hoping to, to get a couple deputy hires in, and I submitted a couple names there to you. Uh, well, actually, I submitted three, but we had to we had to pull one out at the last minute. So, uh, but uh, he 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 failed his his background. So, but uh, the two that I have in there, I think I, I give you all information, work history, and all that stuff on there. So, uh, basically, I'm just. Just submitting that and trying to get 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 two employees or two deputies hired in. We God knows we need it. So as far as the other backgrounds, when you check those, they were okay. And yeah, the other no. Everything everything turned out good on all the all the backgrounds, um, except the the third third name that I drew out wrote wrote the last. It didn't come back good. And I didn't. I didn't. Uh, also, in these hires too, I want to mention this: that we haven't done a psych evaluation on any of them. So that may be something that you want pertaining to. If we do hire the the psych evaluation, needs to be passed because they're like six hundred dollars a piece. So I didn't schedule any of that until I talked with you all and see what you wanted to do on that that part of it. So uh, that's basically my understanding. And you know, in the code, that's about all we have left. That and the in the you know lie detector test polygraph. But uh, that, that's not a problem. I've got a guy in Cabot County that will come down and, and give that polygraph for nothing. Uh, without naming names, uh, could you tell us uh, how they failed the test? I know you submitted names before you said it. Oh, how they got canceled out? They had a uh, suspended driver's license. So, oh, okay. I mean, that's, yeah. So what you're wanting us to do is go ahead and approve, and then you will follow up with what? If, if they pass the rest of their test. Time friend we didn't have you know if you prove me to hire the two or two positions then I can send them to do the polygraph and psych evaluation and all that stuff but I didn't do that I didn't want to have to do a bunch of psych evaluations and all that and have all that extra money you know so I'm kind of trying to pinpoint it down to the two that, that I've got on the test um, well I had pinpointed the three but obviously the third one has been withdrawn but so that's that's kind of where we're at. Just trying to trying to save a little bit of extra money because those things are pricey. Six hundred dollars a piece for a psych evaluation. That's that's pretty high. Mm -hmm. So naturally, you don't want to send you know three three candidates out there and then you don't get to hire them and then you're out you know eighteen hundred dollars. So when when do we uh, do our budget? When will we leave with the sheriff? Tuesday. It's kind of Tuesday. She's notified you that. Yeah. Okay. Mary and I talked today. We we got I got a letter and memo and everything on that. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock Tuesday morning. Uh, well, I appreciate it, sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
just uh, in talking with, I, I probably spent more time on the budget on it maybe than the other commissioners have. And uh, you know, there's going to be uh, when we meet Tuesday with the various offices, there's we've got some really hard decisions to make. And, uh, just uh, just as a matter of uh, information for the commission uh, when we do meet there. Uh, so is um, you have the letter from uh, the sheriff before you? Uh, is there a motion to hire? Uh, I'll make a motion to hire Jared Martin. I'll see. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Is there any other motion to hire? Well, if there's no motion to hire, uh, we'll go ahead on to unfinished business, possible action. Uh, on the motion to hire uh, Mr. Martin, that's uh, pending the psychological evaluation as presented by the sheriff also. So. Do you have any problems with that? Okay. Lynn Turley's request from the Corporal Community Center. Lynn? I want to thank the commissioners again for the opportunity to come here and represent the Corporal Community Center. Uh, you gave us a donation for the uh, bills that were uh, due for December and January, which was very, very graciously appreciated. It really was. It helped get us through a hard spot, helped us to keep the center open. As a matter of fact, uh, we're trying to keep it from ever going in debt, so we, that money really come in and we were able to do that. Uh, since that time, we've been able to uh, talk with uh, Mr. Barton. We've got the election set up, the early voting and the actual primary there are set up already. We've already signed it and he's got his rooms. We've got the internet coming. We're going to try to have it done by the 1st of April. Uh, I told you it would probably add about $20 to it. It looks like possibly we can get a plan if we sign for it for a year for $19.95 a month on top of our phone bill. Our phone bill now is right around $60. So that's what we're planning on doing. Uh, and that would take care of that and it would allow the election to go on just like we uh, would hope that it would. You mentioned we should bring back the bills uh, for fe or February. And if you'll notice, we gave you a report on page three, if you've got it. Uh, she's got it written down, what it is for March, what it's due. And again, the gas bill was the worst one. It's $473.76. She's also got the electricity. It's $160. Uh, garbage uh, went up just a little bit, a few pennies again this month. It went to $50.13. We just got the water bill today. It's right around $35. And also, again, I said the telephone is around $60. So what she added up here was just for the bills that are actually showing on it. But again, it's right around $682.08. Uh, we hate to come back and ask the commissioners <coughs> but we realize that uh, we're all kind of uh, pinching pennies and trying to survive but the help you gave us, and if we could possibly get any more, would allow us to take some of the monies that we've had donated. The building needs work. The building needs painted inside. It hasn't been done for years and years. We did manage to get the gymnasium uh, last spring, uh, which if you've been there and visited, you know that it really looks so much better where it's been cleaned up. Us taking care of the building just makes the building more valuable uh, to the county of Lincoln, and that's what we're trying to do. So I'd like to be able to, if we do the work ourselves, I'd like to be able to add some paint inside just to make it look a little bit better. So the reason we're coming tonight, and you said to bring these back to you, is uh, if we could get a little more on that, just maybe even the gas bill this time, that would free up just a little bit of money. I received a check yesterday, so I couldn't put it on the agenda, from uh, Mayhew Construction has made a contribution um, of $500, but $250 of uh, it is for the community centers, and then $250 is for future self-help water projects. So I want to give this to the commission on their behalf and thank them for it. So this was, uh, we sent out the letters, we told you, that you know, Doc had mentioned, I think, the last time. Yeah, where I thought we talked about sending letters to you, the community uh, corporate partners, and asking for donations either to the community centers or the self-help water projects and uh, we and we've at least got this from us so that's good and, and I see we've, we've got Mr. Jackson in here too so I, I'm hoping he got one of those letters still to the south. <laughs> but um, you know 
Well, so so basically, what you're saying, you need another uh, 682. 682. Is that right? That would really help us, so we could maybe free up just a few dollars so we can buy just some some paint right. and do a little bit of odds and ends to the building. We've been very fortunate. We actually took in, I think, a little over seven hundred dollars in donations since the last time we met here. Uh, we had Hazel at Construction Company again step up and give us a big donation. So I want to thank them publicly. They've really been been very good about helping us. They're also the company that gave us the air pump for our sewer system. So they really, really stepped up and helped us there. And then we've got another donator that uh, she likes to kind of donate on the QT. So, but she has given us quite a bit of money also to help us. So we're very fortunate on that. We've got people that that want to help and that want to see the center stay open. So. Well, and we want to take good care of it for uh, everybody in Lee County. It, it's the community center, and it's very important. It serves a purpose. Uh, we just see people in there in desperate need, I'll be honest with you. Uh, there are always going to be people that come that just use you, but there are people there that really, really need our help. You would be surprised what comes through the doors. The other day, I believe it was last Thursday, I believe we had probably 50, 60 some people come to and sign the book. Today we had, I believe, 30 some. So you'd be surprised what you see. We're, we're doing a good work there in the community, and I'd like to continue to be able to do that work. And, and this would greatly help us. Sorry about that. I'll move to uh, get more book community center, $682.08. Or second. Wait, what was it? 682. 682.08. I'll second that. I was trying to say aye. 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 Pass, so we'll get you your 682 plus 125 of that, right? Is that what it is? Well, I don't, do you want to, part of me feels like we should put that in the account for starting. Okay, you, and, and, and these accounts we're, we're, we're making for this is, a, well, well, let's go by how we're going to handle these types, because I think that's what, I think we talked last time about, we, we would want to help when we had to. You know, pretty much. I mean, when, we, when we're needed, if you're doing the right things and getting the donations, everything you're doing is right. And what we hope to do is establish an account. And you, you can know what's in that account at any time that more from the court that we need, it might need. And then when you need something, bring it to us and, and we would, uh, you know, hopefully we'd see the same precedent, I mean, the same priority as what you do with it. And then just go ahead and give you that amount from this account. And I'm hoping that uh, uh, the letter we sent out will get generate us more money for these type of things. And and all we would be we would do that that would allow us to have a fail safe in case you guys are running low on money. We get like next winter's when you know we think about it again. You know, and and hopefully by that time we would have a significant amount of money to help you through that and everything. So if they, if I and I, I kind of agree I agree with Commissioner Harris. It's okay if you will put this in account that uh, that amount of money would be designated for McCorkle uh, Center. And then, like, as you go through different things, if you find something uh, that you want the commission to uh, act on, then bring it to us, and then we'll review it, look how much money we've got, and decide how much we can give you on that. If that's, uh, I mean, I think that's probably the, in the long run, that helps you, because I think this, uh, this account will really continue to pass to all of us eventually, hopefully. Now, it, it, it may not be, we don't have an obligated fund uh, for money for that, but as we get money, we can put it in that, and, and I'm hoping that our, our, our corporate community partners would help us with those and, and that way uh, they can be recognized for what they do for the people of the Oracle Community Center and the Heart Center and, and the water projects too because they do a lot other than just hire people that work here and, and this would help I think us help them too tax wise and things because we, we need help as you know and, and, and it's the people in Hearts uh, know and uh, if we had the money, we'd do it without asking, but we, we, we've come to the point that we'd have to ask, and hopefully we'll get some response that will help us in that. But are you all agreeable with that? Does that sound all right to you guys? So we'll, we'll do that. Go ahead. I'd just like to thank you, commissioners. I think that's a wise idea. We talked about the last meeting there a little bit. This will give you something to fall back on if emergency does arise for one of us. things. Like I said, it's not guaranteed by any, but it's some money. All you can get good, and I think it was a wise decision. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we, and we thank you for it. And I'd like to make a public invite. We're going to try sometime in the middle of April to have a meet and greet for people that are running for candidates, county commission, or whatever office that it may be. We're going to make it open so they can kind of come there and we can meet with them and they can discuss their views and whatnot. So we'll announce the date. 
Do we want anybody? Anybody wants to? Thank you, sir. Okay, you all have had time to review a new business is presented. Is there anything we need to change on this or amend prior to? Okay, if not, I, uh, I ask for a motion to approve the new business as presented. So moved. I'll second that. Okay, say aye. aye. Thank you. Now we'll go into open discussion. Commissioner Matthews. Uh, just happy to announce that we've uh, signed a lease agreement, started signing lease agreements with T-Mobile for our towers. Uh, T-Mobile started to come into the county and uh, they've made a commitment to Lincoln County and uh, this is just one of many. Appreciate Doc signing that for the meeting. <laughs> wow. That's it. Commissioner Harris? No. Um, I wanted to tell everyone, uh, Mr. Baker, our county clerk, received another grant for records preservation for the amount of $15,183. We, we, we appreciate you uh, working to do that for us. And for yeah, and that's, that's the, the project y'all also contributed to a couple months ago with the uh, $7,000 or $8,000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for the, uh, uh, the new server for the courthouse, the window server. So that's really about a, about a $24,000, $25,000 project and it's be a big deal. I mean we, well, the the new system that we're going to get in the clerk's office now for uh you know, the indexing that we have, uh paper records that we have, we'll tie all that back together and if we have digital images and tie those with the indexing, uh, it's, it's gonna be good. Uh, we we go back to in our indexing right now to two thousand two we'll be able to go back to about uh, 1983, eight, 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 I believe 83 now on the computer. So. And I did, uh, uh, Commissioner Matthews and myself went over and looked at the uh, election center. It's all it's almost completed. Once we get it completed, we'll open it up and let people see what we've done. But it's uh, it's it's a very much it, it, it's going to make a process of uh, that Mr. Baker's made fairly simple the way it is, but we have a much better physical plan to work in with these elections and storing machines and uh, insurance security of the area and things like <coughs> that. So, uh, uh, and they're just within a day of being finished with that. It's Loading like, and unloading, getting in and out of doors with double Oh yeah, it's just, it's just so much better than what, and we don't have to worry about the snow blowing in while we're <laughs> and things of that nature. So. Doc, I said I didn't have anything, but we may want to make mention, um, it's under a new business, but March 4th at or March 14th, I'm sorry, at 6 p.m. there'll be a public meeting to, um, I think, would you like to address that to update the floor plan? Yes, Commissioner. Uh, the, it's, it's for the letter map revision uh, for three map panels that basically tie in uh, Upper Mud River Road with uh, Route 3 Straight Fork uh, to move the uh, regulated floodway. Basically, it's going to open up the as you're heading back to to West Hamlin, it's going to open up the whole right-hand side of um, the New Hamlin area for future development and such. It's taking it out of the floodway, putting it back into a, a, a flood zone that can be built in and houses can be refurbed and things of that nature. The other side, the intent of that was, the reason that happened was because of the church that's going to go in there behind McDonald's. Uh, the church hired uh, Potesta Engineering to to do all the work to uh, quite a, 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 a quite a big sum of money to do the engineering, so that they can put the church in there behind the, the McDonald's and the Dollar General. So, because of that action, that opened up that whole side of New Hamlin. And if I could make a correction, that uh, that public meeting now is uh, the thirteenth instead of the fourteenth. It, it's in the uh, newspaper notification that was in the new business. It was changed yesterday, so I think Mary got that update. Yeah, I probably already had, I got the updated one, but I already had the agenda. Okay. Yeah. So if you have any questions, I do have maps. Anybody will stay around and look at them. I got the maps and how that's going. Let me just ask you, that. we used to have several years ago, we had problems with flooding over behind there and things. Does this address that in any way or not? Uh, you mean where the church is going to go? No, no, I'm talking about on the right-hand side where people are having trouble with flooding issues. I don't know, maybe that's cured because I haven't heard anything about it lately. Well, the, the areas that are closer to Straight Fork, to Lynn Avenue, uh, are still in flood zones, but they're not in floodway. In a floodway, the requirement was you had to have a hydraulic and hydrologic studies done 
and the starting number on that was about eight or nine thousand dollars just to get one done for even a small piece of property for a house. What it's done now is taking the floodway and taking it across the road toward the high school. And so all that area off to the right we're talking about now are in A or AE zones, which all you have to do is now is just basically have elevation certificates and figure out how high up out of the flood zone you have to be. So it does free up a lot of area for where, like for instance, the Petrie oil field lot down there. There have been several people asked about buying that. And they were asked what they could do with it. And then my answer was it, it, it's doing what it can do. It's a parking lot. Mm -hmm. But now that the floodway's out of there, that, that property now is opened up for, for development. Yeah, I'm glad to see this has done, been done. I think it's a shame that the church had to absorb the cost of doing it. I think the FEMA, the Army Corps of Engineers, somebody should have updated those maps. When, right. when they, but anyway. It's done, I guess. <laughs> well, hopefully, I mean, and, and uh, Mr. Jackson and I talked briefly a little earlier. You know, FEMA's answer to that was it's going to try to get it in the budget, and if they got it in the budget, it'd be three to five years to get Lincoln County updated. Uh, I haven't, I haven't gotten an update on whether how much of that has made the budget and how much is going to pass on it, especially with these continuing resolutions going on at the federal level. <clears throat> But, uh, it just hasn't been updated for so long, but I don't know how it's even. Well, actually, actually those maps reflect pre-Mud River Dam uh -huh. floodplain. I mean, I don't know how you enforce that, really, because they're so, you know. <laughs> well, as, well, you know, in the next three to five years, we'll try to get to change. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on a lighter note, uh, we have begun... Commissioner Matthews has already talked to one of the landowners below the Mud River Dam. Because of those that don't know, we're trying to get uh, DNR to stop trout below in the tailwaters of the Mud River Dam. They, and the director of the DNR said he would do it if we could get the people involved to sign off on uh, easements as far as public uh, stream access and things of that nature. We have the uh, contact information on those individuals, on those people that own that land up there, and I have uh, KK's already talked to him, and I have. Uh, I talked with uh, Delegate uh, Eldridge last night, and uh, the process should, I was hoping we could have it done so we could stock this spring, but I, I think that's because they have to do parking areas and things like that. We have to get to DNR to uh, talk to the landowners about uh, limiting liability and things like that, because <coughs> they would provide liability insurance for the landowners, and uh, also try to identify areas we could develop parking areas for stream access and things of that nature. But this is going on, and we're farther along than we've ever been. And, uh, you know, the stream quality's already been checked and things, so it, it is paddle for the trout to uh, be stopped there. And we're looking at nearly two miles uh, from the from the, uh, uh, the dam uh, tailwaters itself, two miles downstream. And uh, we do, like I say, we have identified the landowners and the contact information, and we're starting right now. Doing that. So hopefully all of us old guys, the next... Uh, Next spring, we'll have a place to trout fish in Lincoln County. We're the only county in southern West Virginia that doesn't have one of these. And we, I pay for a trout stamp, and I know a lot of other people do too. And I hate to go to Wayne County or to Barbersville or somewhere to fish. So, uh, but it looks like uh, this may be a work plan if we can get the, uh, the landowners to sign off on it, things of that nature. And I've had a, a, a couple other people that live up there that are talking to the landowners too, trying to. And this would be a great boon not only for the fishing up there, but for what businesses are up there. You know, you have the, the uh, camping area up there, and you also have another area, below, another business below it. And I'm sure once we get this done, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really help us grow in that area. And we don't, since we don't have Ho, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Hobet site to work with, we're going to work with what we can. But uh, I will make comment as far as uh, what was brought up uh, by Mr. Stutman, Mr. Pauling, and Mr. Ryan. To me, you know, and I've, I was, I was, Dr. McClellan delivered me, so I've been around here a long time. And we've always not only got the short end of the stick, we got the muddy end of the stick. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the muddiest sticks I've ever seen us get. And we need to make sure that uh, we get questions answered. We get questions as to why we were left out, why we weren't consulted. Because we all, those of us that's dealt with politics before and state politics and federal politics, no, things aren't done, just be done. They're done for a reason. There's somebody that's profiting from this. And uh, I think we need to 
to ferret that out to see what the problem is because we don't we don't have a lot of places like that to develop. I don't think anywhere in Southern West Virginia do they. Uh, and we especially need this. I mean, we, uh, you know, we're underwater in a lot of things in this county, and, and uh, the only way to get out from underwater is to build a dam. And uh, if we're not going to be, if we're told we're, we're going to build that dam for you, and then we don't get it done, then it puts us in a really bad place. And, and uh, so uh, we fully support uh, uh, the letter that uh, Mr. Stubler uh, is sending to them, and uh, we would ask any. Uh, anybody in the county that wanted to comment on it, they can send their comments to the, I think the governor ought to receive the comments, and then uh, when this meeting's set up, I, you know, we will, we will be there in force and be able to uh, nicely ask uh, what happened, and uh, hopefully uh, there'll be a sensible answer to it, although I don't see one that uh, has anything I can agree with with it. You know, if we're, if we're not going to cause economic growth in Lincoln County, uh, I need to know why. You know, we were we were sold a bill of goods. You know, they went ahead and had all these monies out for us. You know, and then you change uh, one or two individuals, and they can stop a project that helps. You know, ever how many people we have in this county and surrounding areas. So, uh, it, it's you know, we may, we may not be able to do anything about it, but at least they're going to know when they do Lincoln County the way they done. Uh, We'll take a take a little uh, lesson from our teachers, and we need to bring injustice to light, and that's what I think this was. This was an injustice for our county. Uh, but anyway, I I, I, total, I I we totally support the EDA and what they're doing, and the Quarter G Development Authority because um, without you guys, we don't have anyone to run the point for us. And uh, sometimes when you're when you're out in the battle and things like that, you need not only the point people, but you need other people. And that's where I expect the people of Lincoln County to come forth and say, look, this wasn't right, you know. And, and, and like I say, we may, we, we may or may not uh, benefit from it, but I can tell you this, um, any of those that benefit from this move, they won't be supported by Lincoln County. Anymore. If we don't get support for our county, we won't support them. And, uh, and that's just, that's the way it has to be. I mean, you know, it's not that, it wasn't our decision to be this way. They made the decision, we have to react to that decision and do what we think is best for this county. Anything else? All right, if not, did you have well, I just want to mention the meeting on April 5th. We're, I feel like we're going to have a special meeting before then. Do you want to? Uh, are we talking about the? Uh, to approve the budget, well, I have something, but I just don't know what date. Exactly. Okay. So well, just, we'll we just. Can, we can just, uh, we can, you know, yeah, we won't know because we won't know when we're finished with that, right. so we really couldn't do it. We've got to have it to the 27th, the 28th, 28th. Well, the commission will, we usually meet once a month on our regular meetings, but we have a budget this month, and uh, what Commissioner Harless brought up is that we have to approve that budget before a particular time, before our next meeting, so we will be having a special session just to do that. Uh, when we determine that, we'll be able to notify the public and post it as uh, needed. Anything else? All right, um, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting until April 5th, 2018 at 6 o'clock. Oh, man. So, I don't know if there's a, huh? All right. We stand adjourned. Thank you all. Appreciate it.